Hey folks, welcome to a replay watch party with Pedro's uh, battle out in the Moonbat. Pretty sure he told me this was his second match in the Moonbat, which is awesome. Uh, I want to highlight a couple of things. I watched this in advance, which I don't normally do with these replay re reviews, so I can be surprised by them. But this time I did just to do something a little different. And I saw a couple of things I really wanted to point out that I thought were great. And uh, you're going to see um, by the end of the battle, you know, the awards he gets and, and what he did was pretty cool. So anyway, we are going to uh, immediately take this sector, which is not a bad idea. And the Moonbat has such good guns. You can just sort of delete things, right? Um, any Anyone want to bet that this was a heavy fighter until Wargaming was like, oh yeah, we've already done like multiple American heavy fighters. We have to make it a light fighter now. <laughs> So all these are down, and the zone's going to get flipped as soon as this guy gets finished, and he's going to head to the mining plant. Now, I will say this. I think he probably should have just killed one plane and gone to the mining plant. Mostly because um, both the enemy bombers are already over here. There's a heavy fighter off his 5 o'clock right there that he's going to twist into. And it's a 262. Um, and then there's also a ground attacker over here as well. The way this map is set up, right? Um, and it's going to go fast because of that. The plant, the plant's already capped, right? Which is normally why, and it worked out for, it's going to work out for him here. But normally if I'm in this situation on this map, I kill one plane over the garrison. Like I try and get it down and then I go ahead and come to the mining plant. I do what I call a brushing pass on the first zone, right? So, um, unfortunately, he's got to destroy these kind of outside the zone because they're going to push on, and he doesn't want them to cap another zone while he's trying to deal with this one. But I want you to watch. Do you see what he's doing right here, this roll? I, I, I love it. Um, you're going to watch him throughout the match do this, and this is one of the things I wanted to point out. He's going to... Uh, when you watch uh, his movement... He rolls a lot, and he, he rolls to set himself up for, like, vector changes. Um, and it's very smooth the way he does it. And what ends up happening is he gets on target a lot faster and stays on target, right? You see I rolled into that? It's, it's a steeper turn than you would see just by, just by hitting the mouse, I feel like. And um, he does it on a couple of these uh, that are good. Now, on this map, the only thing that matters is the mining plant there's there's these four sectors right but the mining plant is basically worth three sectors so if you control the mining plant one other you're fine right so he's got to take this and he does not have a bomber his bombers are here which is good but he's going to break all the cardinal rules that we tell new players and strafe ground targets and he does it smartly because this is a it's as good those 20 millimeter cannons there is a lot of firepower there and he's just added 40 points to the capping See, his tw he's twisting again there, how good that is. Uh, it just, it, it changes the angle on his, his turns, uh, which I think is really interesting and uh, reminded me, you know, should be using the, using the A and D keys a little bit, right? Um, so he's added some to it. We're down to 100, and there's enemy planes coming back in the zone, including these heavies. I, I'd be nervous going head-to-head -head with a Key 93 because of the guns on it, but... Yeah, this is a pretty beefy plane for a light fighter. Um, the tail just got shredded, looks like, by a shell there that hit the, uh, the vertical surface. And, of course, there is enough forward firepower, and he immediately repairs it, which is good. That, the tail really makes it hard. To, see how he flipped over again? Like, he's rotating around the, the, the center axis of the aircraft in a way that's really helpful for getting him on target where he needs to be. And uh, it was really something that fascinated me. He's doing it again. Like, look at that. He's not just moving the mouse down. He is, he is rotating, right, as he does it. And he's going to flip over, but watch why he flips over, right? It's changing the, the position and allows him to come up under this guy with extra speed, which is incredible. That's a great way to do it. And he's fighting it upside down here, right? And again, he just goes into the dive, right, because of the way he's already canted, he can go straight into it. So um, really just something I, I thought was intriguing, something I want to add to my game is, is using that roll a little more. Um, and he's going to go ahead and clear this other target, and this will flip the zone if you can do it, right? Um, 
So, oh, he did it. He got it. Maybe started fire or maybe just got it, got it. See that, that wing over again? He just winged over there, right? Um, it's an efficiency and a grace of movement that I don't often see in the game, uh, especially when people are just using a mouse, right? And I haven't asked him, but I feel like he's using more than a mouse, right? He's really getting engaged either with a keyboard or with some keybinds. Uh, picking up some speed and also getting a repair. He's flipped the plant. It's three to one. There is an enemy P80 on the other team. We haven't seen him yet. Um, I don't know where he's been, if he came over here and just was over the airfield or if he's working on something else. But good choice to prioritize the Spitfighter because of the turning ability over the airfield, right? It's good to get that guy out for it. Look. He's the wing over again, right? He lag rolls into it, and that gives him another second on the burst, and he's going to go up. I've talked often about how, and he does it again, loops, right? And comes back on another plane, on the, and then he's going to come over on the Spitfire, turning into him, and again, because of that rotation, he's able to get around on the Spitfire faster, right? If you just use the mouse, you're not going to make that turn the way he does. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. Chase down the XP-72. There's really nothing for him to do now except farm personal points, unless that mining plant gets flipped again, right? BVP, dangerous aircraft, you're on the six. Yeah, go ahead and knock him out if you can, right? So, again, turning. He's obviously using those, those roll keys, right? And just enough time and, and on target to be able to to put stuff down so really interesting he's also keeping his speed up which is another great thing especially in a fighter like this you know the faster you're moving the harder it is for people to hit you and the more energy you have for maneuvers so even though he's at low altitude he's keeping his speed topped up and i like that as well if you are fighting down low don't fight down low and slow at least fight fast and down low right so we're going for the uh strangled here and uh you know trying to flip this last zone to end the match. He's got, again, a pair of ground targets that are almost dead. And so he's got to watch the tower, though. And because of his role, he's able to stay on target even with the, the tower being there, right? That one's a little tougher to get because there's some armored ground targets there. But he's able to put this, uh, put some work in on that light one as well. And we've noticed the P-80, right? And again, He's getting this beautiful wing over. He's turning himself almost, uh, you know, 180 degrees, almost onto his back. Um, and because of that, you know, we're fixing this sort of angle, uh, forcing the P-80 to, um, to kind of come back into, which is really, you know, this is going to be interesting. Watch. He's even able to get a little, almost get guns on, right, because of that rolling action that he put in there. And if you're, if you're in his shoes, what do you do now? Uh, P-80s are interesting because... You can build them any number of ways. Um, you can build them as turn fighters. They won't be super turny, but you can. Uh, you can burn them, uh, to build them as speed fighters, right? Um, you can do a number of different things with them. And it's hard to know what a given player is going to be using their P84. This one's not specialized, so there are some limitations. But generally speaking, I would think you would, you know, uh, burn away from here at full speed. But he's going to go back in and try and finish the ground target, and then he's going to come up, and again over again turning the wings right he's using rudder here too look the rudder is is over in position right it's it's uh canted off to the side there so you can use you can tell he's using the rudder so between the roll and the rudder he's able to get shots on target here when normally you may not be able to right and he's going to do the same thing that's a rudder right there as well look his rudder is off center he's using the rudder this is this is good so, and then that twist, that roll, right? And the roll is going to enable him to get there, put him out, and he's up over 15,000 points now. So I just, I love, there's a, a certain grace and elegance in using that roll rate. And um, it's something that I miss, particularly in heavy fighters. It's one of the reasons I'm not as comfortable in heavy fighters. Another roll, another wing over right there, right? Um, I'll let this play out so you can see the, the final score there. This is one of the reasons I'm not as comfortable in heavy fighters because the roll rate's so bad, right? Um, and the, I've, I've realized the heavy fighters I feel more comfortable in are the heavy fighters that have decent roll rate, you know, things like the Arrow. Um, the XP-67 is not a heavy fighter, obviously, but it has a great roll rate, right? And you saw that kind of um, in his match here. 14 kills, three zones captured. Um, but you also see uh, the best part of this, which is he managed to get a Gabreski out of it with an XP-67. Uh, 10 aerial targets and 7 ground targets. 
Um, and you know, one, one of the things that I like to point out in this, and one of the reasons I love this, is there's different stages of learning the game, right? And there's things that you have to learn to do in a game. Uh, and this is true for life too, right? You learn how to do things, but then once you become good at it, you also learn where the line is of the things you do and don't do. And then there's a level you reach where you understand how and when to break the rules to do better. And that's exactly what happened here. The rule is don't strafe ground targets to the light fighter. But in this case, he knew the game well enough to know I can win this battle by doing this. And this is a good place for me to spend my time and energy because of the map that I'm on, the sectors we're dealing with and, and the enemy, you know, lack of enemy fighters nearby. I can afford to do this and it's going to make a difference here. And I really think that's, you know, kind of the one of the final skills you unlock in this or any game is, is knowing when to break the rules. And this was certainly one where rules were broken in the best possible way and it resulted in this Gabreski. So Pedro, uh, congratulations. Loved watching you fly, man. Uh, you just, it's this XP67 is like a puppet on strings for you, right? It's a good plane, but you certainly put it to good use. Um, and just that ability to roll and find new angles um, and to stay on target a little longer are really helpful. It's something I would encourage everyone to practice and certainly something I'm going to go practice now as well. So thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, appreciate you guys spending the time with me. Uh, got at least one more video for you this week um, of my own design. And uh, we've got some good things coming up in the next uh, probably 10 days or less. We'll have an announcement on the uh, marathon for the Japanese bomber. Uh, to go coincide with Wargaming's anniversary. And uh, that'll be interesting to see how that's unveiled and what we're looking at in terms of certificates and all that for the bomber. And uh, so I'll be interested to see. So until then, good luck and good hunting to you. I hope you're having a great time and uh, really putting in some good work for the summer ends here. Um, if you would like to uh, fly it up at some point, you see me in the game, just send me a little note. I'd be happy to fly with, uh, fly with you at any time and uh, enjoy the game together. So uh, catch you on the next one.